for our preacher, Pastor Kelly Chapman, who serves the Synod as advisor for racial equity. I thank Joe Davis for his spoken word and Alyssa Schweitzer and all of the Redeemer musicians. I offer a special thanks to our ASL interpreters. And finally, we are so grateful to St. Philip, the Deacon Lutheran Church, for hosting this worship service in their beautiful sanctuary and for recording this for us. The killing of George Floyd at the hands of police occurred right here in the Minneapolis area Synod. It has generated protests in every state and all around the world. In our worship this morning, we name and we confess the sin of racism and commit to working for racial equity and building beloved community. I ask that as we worship, you will turn to the bulletin, which your congregation should have received, and participate with us as we confess, as we are forgiven, as we pray for the power of God through the Holy Spirit. We continue our worship, for God has promised to meet us here. I know that in times of tragedy and trauma, it's when we hold on to what and who matters most that we can make it through. That's what the song is about. Hold on. All of my songs, prayers, and positive vibes can't draw the eyes of the mama who cries because the violence in the skies can't make her sun rise. Too many times she's been tried, persecuted, and crucified. Why does it feel like these rivers of justice must have run dry? We don't know who to trust. Can't tell the truth from the lies. When grieving the loss of life, we still can't decide who lacks humanity, whose humanity is denied. We gotta put on y'all.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is enduring and whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we thank you for making one human family of all the peoples of the earth and for creating the wonderful diversity of all the cultures. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of communion with one another. We confess our failures to love and seek justice. We confess the sin of racism. We have assigned the notion of race to human, human beings created in God's own divine image. We have judged God's beautiful diversity by our flawed and artificial standards. We cry out to you, forgive us, us, O God. God. We have accepted practices in our church and society that privilege whiteness over diversity and equity. We have been complicit in how racism continues to exclude and harm people of color. We cry out to you. Forgive, Forgive us, us, O God. God. We have been silent and apathetic in the face of racial intolerance and bigotry, both overt and subtle, public and private. We cry out to you. Forgive, Forgive us, us, O God. God. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Empower us to speak boldly for justice and truth, and help us to find that unity that is the fruit of righteousness. We cry out to you. Grant, grant us, us courage, courage grant, grant us, us wisdom, wisdom, grant us love. God, who is rich in mercy, loves us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that you might walk in newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hi, kids. I'm Pastor John. Could, would you say hi, Pastor John, to me? Wait, wait. I got it. Get ready to listen. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hi, Pastor John. Hi, Pastor John. 
Thank you. I needed that. That feels so good. Choices. 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 Have you ever made a bad choice? I have. I was picking between this thing and that thing, and I picked this thing, and it seemed like the right choice, but this was really the right choice, and it was a bad choice. Oh, have you ever done that? I have. Oh, it's so hard to make choices. Oh, my goodness, it's hard to make choices. Um, You know, once upon a time, uh, I was asked by a friend to go out and tear down some shrubs and some trees. So I got all ready to go. I wore my favorite shoes, yeah. Got out there, we were digging in the tall grass and pulling shrubs up and, and, and taking down trees and then my, I was getting dirty and then it was wet and I was getting muddy and my favorite shoes were like a mess and my socks were wet. I had made a really bad choice. I should have worn my working boots. Why didn't I wear my working boots? Oh my goodness, such a hard choice. But sometimes we can make choices and they're really easy. Like if you're hungry, when you're hungry, should you maybe just look at a nice picture of food if you're hungry? Or maybe, you know, really grab a real food and eat it. Or if you have to haul some books, Maybe should you take a really nice bag with handles on it and, and you know, carry it that way? What do you think? Would that work if you, if you carry some books this way? Yeah, I think maybe, maybe not. Maybe you should use a sturdy box. Well, you know, when Jesus was starting his ministry, people were having a hard time choosing whether to follow him or not. They really loved that he healed people. They really loved that he fed thousands of people with just like a few fish and a few loaves of bread. But then people were not so sure when Jesus was hanging out with sick people and hanging out with poor people and he made friends with people from different countries. Hmm. That was interesting. No, but you... And you, 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 I know you love Jesus, and I know you follow Jesus, or else you wouldn't be watching this. That is so great that your family chooses to follow Jesus and knows that Jesus loves you. But, you know, sometimes it's easy to make choices and hard to make choices. But, you know, but, my goodness, there's one thing we need to remember Jesus always makes the right choice. And you know what Jesus chooses to do? Whether you make a good choice or a bad choice, Jesus chooses to love you, no matter what. And beyond that, Jesus chooses to love everybody, no matter what. That is so amazing. So this week, when you are trying to love Jesus and following Jesus, hope you make the best choices. Work hard to make the best choices, but no matter what happens, remember, Jesus loves you no matter what. And Jesus loves everybody no matter what. And to top it off, Jesus always listens to you when you talk to Jesus. So let's, let's pray. Would you pray exactly what I pray? Would you? Huh? Let's do this. Dear Jesus. Dear, Dear Jesus. Thanks for helping me choose. Thanks for helping me choose. Remind me. Remind me. That you love me. That you love me. That you love everybody else. And you love everybody else. No matter what. No matter what. Amen. 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 Yes. Romans, the seventh chapter. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. 
Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel is from the 11th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 16th verse. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played with a flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethesda! For if the deeds of the power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have been remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, God, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. Holy Gospel is from the 11th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 16th verse. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played with a flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethesda! For if the deeds of the power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have been remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, 
It will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, God, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. He was murdered, yes, where he was lynched. It kind of reminds me to think about the church on Sunday morning. It causes me to ask the question, where is God? The church does not cut us off from the world. The church connects us to the world. It does not matter if our congregation is in Asante or Jordan or Eden Prairie or River, uh, Elk River or North or South Minneapolis. The church is the body of Christ connecting God's people to God's world, God's neighborhood. Our gospel text for today is from the 11th chapter of Matthew, where Jesus has already been baptized by John in the river. And he's fed 5,000 people on the side of a mountain. And Jesus faced temptation, and he had victory over Satan in the wilderness. So that prior to this morning's text, Jesus had had time teaching and healing people throughout the land. And at the beginning of this 11th chapter, John the Baptism is Baptist, he's in prison, and he sends word to Jesus that he wants to know if Jesus is the one that the world has been waiting for or should he be looking for someone else. John wants to know where is God? Jesus, are you the one? Are you the answer to our hopes, the answer to our dreams, or should we be looking for someone else? Jesus responds by saying, go back to John and say, duh. Go and tell John what you hear and what you see that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. What we see in the text, Jesus is lifting up John, and John is lifting up Jesus. Jesus and John are great leaders in the tradition of the prophets, and their mission is to fulfill God's promise of liberation for the people of God, all of God's people. So that John and Jesus are following in the great tradition of the prophets. They are picking up their mantle, and they are saying to one another and to the people of their day, it is time. Can you hear me now? The kingdom of God is at hand. It is time. But of course, there is resistance. And there are people who do not want and or who are not able to see or hear the promise of God in the person of Jesus or in the person of John. I am reminded of when I was growing up as a child, 
in the way that uh, well, before uh, we had cable television, we had one of those big box televisions. So that as a family, we would gather around that big TV set when we would watch Muhammad Ali when he was having a boxing match. Or we gathered around that big box television when Martin Luther King would speak. Or the civil rights movement when it was televised and we saw children being sprayed with fire hoses and chased by dogs. On that big box TV, we relied on a big a rabbit antenna to receive our reception. So that quite often, when the reception would grow weak, someone in the family would jump up and begin to maneuver that antenna and to improve the reception. They would position that antenna to just the right position so that where the reception of the re we received that reception of the clearer picture. So that as we got older, we learned that we could take some aluminum foil and we could attach it to that antenna and it would improve the reception. Jesus and John served as prophets to help people hear and to help them see the promise of God. So that since the time of Abraham and Sarah, and God sent prophets to bring liberation and to help people not forget that God fulfills God's promise. God has not forgotten us. God sent prophets like Moses and Elijah and Elisha and Lydia and Jeremiah and Martin and Bonhoeffer and so, so many more that it is in this deep, deep tradition and witness that Jesus and John offer this testimony of God's faithfulness, not only in their day, but in our day today. And that witness is deep within this worship this morning. So that the tension in the text is the people of God our reception, to remember that God is faithful. God calls us in the witness of the prophets that that reception, when it grows weak, God calls us to reposition ourselves, to hear more clearly the voice and the promise of God. So that in the text, Jesus talks about how the people are distracted and they're unable or unwilling to see. Sound familiar? The distraction in our privilege and in our comfort, living in nice neighborhoods where our children get to attend the good schools and the privilege of living in a country where we don't have to worry about our children being forced into gangs or self-sex trafficking or being forced to maneuver around walls. In recent weeks, Minnesota has been the spotlight and we've had that light of racism and division shining on us. In a lot of ways, the church has been fortunate that the focus has been on police for the history of, rebuke, of abuse and neglect. Thankfully, we have had the witness of the church like places like Holy Trinity and Calvary and others who have been at the epicenter where the death of George Floyd has turned into an international cry for racial justice and confrontation with white supremacy. But we dare not fall asleep. We dare not forget to look at that prophetic witness 
And that as a church, we're grounded in baptism and reformation. This is the reality of South Minneapolis at 38th and Chicago Avenue. But let us not forget that from Mankato to Wilmer to Duluth to Albert Lee to Ur Fergus Falls and throughout our state, there are stories, there are voices to be heard. We are the church. Like Jesus and John, we are rooted in that rich prophetic witness to be the voice of God. Can you hear me now? We are the church called and baptized into a prophetic tradition to proclaim the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and those who are poor have good news brought to them. May we be God's church called to share in this prophetic witness. Amen. Take my hand and leave. to unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. 
Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear us, O God. We pray for the nations. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from partisanship that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O God. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God. We pray for the congregations of the Minneapolis Area Synod. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our buildings. Especially guide and strengthen us as the COVID pandemic keeps us from gathering together in beloved and familiar ways. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us now share together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
pray through poetry. Let us listen to the call of God inviting us to practice resurrection, the resurrection of love, the resurrection of healing, the resurrection of justice.
raise their hands for the answers? Who raised concern for the mother whose child was killed while raising their hands up? Who raised the taxes without raising the wages? Will we raise our standard of education? Will we raise our voices, raise the vibration? If it takes a village to raise a child, what will it take to raise the nation? It takes a village to raise a child. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Following the dismissal, we invite you to share Christ's peace in your homes and your neighborhoods throughout this week. Go in peace. Christ is risen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.